Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Zillica Weekly Update with Amrit Kumar. My name is Chase Raz. I'll be your host, but we're here for Amrit. So, hi, Amrit. Welcome. Good to see you, as always. Thank you very much for inviting me again. I, I have enjoyed doing this. This is our fifth time doing this, and we have quite a few things to talk about. So, apologies to the viewers, but I I'd like to just jump in because last week was a very busy week in the Zillica world. And one of the things we should talk about, I believe, first is let's revisit Valkyrie and the launch of the ETF, their Bitcoin ETF. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember when we had announced Valkyrie that it was uh, going to issue a, a Zillica trust. Of course, not many people were aware of what Valkyrie was. Um, so I think that's now, now you have, <laughs> now you have a good info on what Valkyrie is and what he's trying to do. So yeah, uh, I think last Friday, they launched their Bitcoin uh, futures ETF. Uh, which is trading on NASDAQ. I think within the first five, 10 minutes, they were doing a trading volume of about $10 million. What is really not bad, interesting- Not bad. Yeah, what is really interesting is, even though fr Friday is a bad day, right? Because it's it's your end of- end Everybody's of the already checked out well before the well before the buzzer. Yeah, so it's a, it's, it's a, it's a bad day to launch, uh, to launch a fund. But anyway, I think, I think it received quite a bit of uh, you know, fanfare. Now, what is really interesting, what I feel is really interesting is if you compare the one that approved before Valkyrie, which was ProShares, again, not to you know, badmouth anyone, but if you compare the two entities, they, they look and operate very differently. You know, Valkyrie is very crypto native, right? While um, ProShares, uh, which is, of, you know, their, uh, their product veto is, is actually trading on NYC. So one, obviously they cover two different exchanges for sure, but also the, the, the companies, Companies are different. One is very crypto native, which is Valkyrie, and the other one is a traditional entity that issues ETF and builds ETF structures. What do you think it means for the crypto space in general that there's this crypto native organization that specializes in different cryptocurrency trusts for them to be among the first offering these ETFs? You know, there was a question for a long time would these things ever materialize at all? Would they ever come to be? And I think you know, the inner pragmatist and in all of us would say, sure, just the question was when, but there, there was a, at least societally, this question of, will this ever happen? W what does it mean in a very macro, at a very macro level, simply that there's a crypto native company in that initial pack? Yeah, look, it's, it's, it's the same feeling as saying it's one of us, you know, it's, um, you know, seeing that, you know, traditional Wall Street company trying to do something it's very different from a you know, company that just started, you know, they were not there too long ago. So they were, it's, you know, Valkyrie is a company that that's, you know, probably less than a year old. I, I need to check when they, when they were registered, but they are, they are not a very old company. And yet being able to be at the top, you know, forefront of this is, is a huge success for all of us and not just Zilliqa, but I think the entire blockchain community where you have people coming out of this ecosystem, trying to bridge the gap between the, you know, the traditional uh, you know, Wall Street world and the crypto world. And I think it's a huge success for all of us. What's the talk like right now um, in terms of going outside of Bitcoin and having ETFs for potentially other cryptocurrencies? Is this something that's actively, you know, being discussed? Uh, I, I want to say internal, with them, right, without revealing internal conversations, but is this something that, that different blockchains and different companies like Valkyrie are already starting to contemplate and think about? Or are we just, are we still celebrating the, the Bitcoin ETF? Um, I think they're still celebrating Bitcoin ETF. Um, you know, I've been talking to some people, including, uh, you know, Leah from Valkyrie. It's a bit early. Uh, it's, it's a bit early to go into, into altcoins, uh, you know, anything, anything other than BTC, even ETH to some extent. So I think it, it's going to take time, but anyway, it's, it's, it's a healthy, uh, you know, forward looking step. And again, so this I, well, is I won't complain about one. that. That's a, it's a great step. Right. Yeah. It's, 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 we are still a future step. We need to go to the physically backed, uh, you know, Bitcoin trade ETF, and then we have to look at altcoin. Again, um, altcoin is going to be the next next step. Uh, the next one would be the physically backed one. Exactly. So Valkyrie, big news last week, but something else that happened last week that was big news within the Zillica space and also within blockchains in general, from influencers to blockchains themselves, was the surprise launch of Lunar Crush. No surprise to you, I'm sure, but the surprise launch of Lunar Crush on the Zillica blockchain issuing 
uh, I'm going to say that I'm just going to, you know, say this as a positive, a ridiculous number of wallets, um, a large amount of traction and volume. Give us some insight into this. Um, it was a, a surprise to us, but how much of, uh, how much work has gone into this process? How long has this been going behind the scenes? Yeah, obviously, and I must, I must thank uh, Colin for all the work that he, even though, you know, he's, he's leaving, uh, I think we can take this as a parting gift that he gave, he gave to us. Um, so yeah, thank of, you, of course, he, yeah. So thank you, Colin. Um, so of course, you know, he has been doing a lot of groundwork since the very beginning when he noticed Luna Crush. Uh, at the time, I think he joined, right? You know, at that time, Luna had just launched, and I think he built that chemistry with um, with Luna Crush uh, team as well. And you know, when um, the Luna Crush team decided that you know at some point they're going to launch the token, then obviously we tried to jump and say, or oh, you know, you should do it on Zilliqa. So I would say about six to eight months ago, things started to 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 come into into place. Uh, you know, Zilliqa has uh, invested in Luna Crush as a company and tokens. So we are very excited that you know we of course we have been sort of controlling our our excitement for a long time because we knew that's coming out. Uh, but I think it's it's you know the group launch was successful. Uh, there were a little bit initial hiccups, so I think we, that got sorted out very quickly. You know some similar hiccups we saw with uh, Port as well in the early days. But I think uh, this is a world where you know we have to figure out uh, things as we move along. So um, and the interesting bit, I you know we were discussing this last time, um, Chase. You know there is there are applications which are I I always call you know de develop you know developed for Goldman quants, right? You know a lot of DeFi products. Have, quite complex, you know, again, I'm not saying complex for me or you, but they are generally complex for an average user. They're complex for me. <laughs> you, need, you, need to, you need to spend quite a bit of time digesting uh, in and out of it and then understanding all the risks. And what I feel is that, you know, with, uh, you know, tokens like XCA, with tokens like Luna Crush, uh, the look tokens like Port, these projects are really driving, um, uh, you know, ideas that are much more easily digestible, right? It's, it's much more reachable for an average crowd. And I think this is where, you know, all these, you could call them social tokens and whatever you call it. But the idea is to be able to bring an average a user using some of these dApps. And I think that's, that's, that's why I like kind of the suite of applications that is now, that's now being built from, you know, well, you call it, you know, Zillwall through uh, collaborative painting and pixel artwork to XCAD to Lunar and, and to NIP, for example, all these sort of build that social element into it to a point where I think at some point, <laughs> Zilliqa is sort of transforming in itself into a social chain where you'd see all sorts of social tokens being built. It's almost as if somebody, somebody could say you're turning holders into users. Is, could that be said? I mean, is that is that really what's happening here? The, the wave of social tokens, all joking aside, are we seeing that transformation play out in, in front of our eyes? Yeah, I mean, again, I've not taken a snapshot uh, in recent uh, weeks, but um, I remember that when I was looking at it uh, about, a month ago, uh, the number of actual users, you know, utilizing DeFi tokens and all that uh, and staking. And if you compare that number with uh, the total number of addresses that are out there, so it's about 5%. So 5% of all the addresses on the Zilliqa blockchain are now involved in, in DeFi activities and, you know, usage basically. And I agree with your point that, you know, the idea is to be able to bring all these people into using some of these products and not just holding it because then we are basically wasting all these token holders. And I think um, some of these tokens that projects are being launched is actually driving. And then, when, you know, we saw that, right? When Port was active uh, in the early days, you know, you saw the number of people driving transactions volume to Zilliq, and that's kind of what you want. And I'm hoping that you know, with XCAD and, and Lunar, same thing will happen. So with, with Lunar, Crush, I wanna ask something about um, what John had said in, an open, in a Twitter space. He's a product founder and marketer um, over at Lunar Crush. And he had mentioned that the partnership with Zillica was based around a strategic alignment um, around community and social. So I think we see the social element and, the, and, and all of that. Do you read into the same type of thing? Was this a technological match made in heaven? Or was this an alignment of values? Or right we just happen to be walking in the same direction and we get along really well which by the way is how some of the best business <laughs> business uh um, mergers and everything else uh happen so what was the nature of the alignment between zilliqa and lunar crest specifically so the first time obviously uh, you know there was 
a very good chemistry between Colin, uh, Matt, and Joe and John uh, from the Lunar uh, crush, crush side. So the first day when I talked to uh, Joe about uh, Lunar Token, at that point, it was not super clear how this would be structured. They knew that you know, we have to sort of um, you know, take benefit of the community that they have around themselves, incentivize them so that they will have they will be able to spread the word out and be able to maximize the benefit that uh, you know social tracking gives you. But at that point, it was not really clear how to how they're going to go about it. But even at that point, we knew what uh, Luna Crush had built with their existing platform, and we knew their mission, what they wanted to do in some way, and therefore we were basically sold on the idea that they initially had, even though it was not super concrete. So I would say that it was um, you know. And the both side, I think they made a bet on us and we made a bet on them that you know we are going to make, make this work you know, together. So I would say that it was, it was being able to uh, sort of leverage the community that they had built and being able to leverage the community that we had around Celica and being able to, to intersect them in some way. So that was the initial idea. But again, it took a while for us to, and for you know, Luna Crush team to figure out how to gamify their experience and so on, which you will now see in their app. Well, good. A lot of bets being made all all around, and one bet that Zillica Research has made recently is in bringing on Dr. Ben Livshitz. Um, so has um, I'll just call him Dr. Ben for now. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting him yet. Um, has Ben started? Um, is there a start date coming on? Has he been already kind of working with the team behind the scenes for a little bit, or what does that whole process look like? Yeah. So um, welcome, Ben. Uh, if, you're, if you're watching this. Hi, Ben. Um, <laughs> So uh, yeah, um, we he you know he has been you know I've been in touch with him for a long time now uh, about a year now uh, even when he was at Brave you know again discussing about different things. And so um, if no, and, and by the way, if anybody doesn't know, he was um, um, quite prominent at Brave, right? The browser that we all know. So that's where he's coming to Zilliqa from. Yes, yeah, so he was he was the chief science officer at at Brave. And he was also a faculty member before that uh, at Imperial College London. So I've been, I've been in touch with, with him for a long time now. Um, some of the other people who are in the Zilliqa team or are involved with the Zilliqa team, you know, knew Ben for a while. So it's not that, you know, Zilliqa was new to him uh, or we were new to him. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he's still settling in, uh, you know, trying to understand, uh, you know, what was being done, what are the projects that are around there and how to steer them. So it's, it will take a bit of a while, uh, but yeah, he sees he's into the groups of things. And so with, with you as the president, how are some uh, sort of the day-to-day -day type of operations? Have you all sat down and talked about um, different responsibilities and different focus points and different parts of the organization and, and your abilities to steer them? What have those conversations been like so far? I would say that some of these things are still being discussed. Uh, it's not all straight in out yet. Uh, but again, it's, you know, we are giving him time to digest everything. You know, it's not, you know, it may sound like a small startup, but Zilliqa, one internally and even externally, it's a huge ecosystem. So to be able to understand all the bits and pieces, I think it's, it's important to just spend time, uh, you, know, you know, inside the team and then outside as well. So uh, I think once, once that settles in, I think then uh, we'll have a much broader and better sort of uh, demarcation on, on how we structure this. I think one thing that people are going to look for, um, especially from you, Amrit, is this sense of when somebody new comes into the ecosystem, a lot, you know, there are times we don't get to meet everybody, right? You mentioned the other day um, that Zilliqa is now over 50 people strong, right? It's over five zero, over 50 yeah. people strong. We don't get the opportunity to meet everybody. So when we do get to meet somebody like Ben, we want to, we, we kind of want to know what to expect, um, that everything's okay, right? People are change adverse to a large degree. So the question I want to attach to that is when we look at Dr. Ben Livshit's background, uh, we talked about being CSO over at Brave, uh, more than 10 years with Microsoft Research, um, affiliated with multiple universities across, uh, I believe, two continents, specializing in things like privacy and various other areas. What does that say, and, and sorry, Ben, to take the attention away from you for a moment, but what does that say not about Ben specifically, but what does that say about Zillica and the selection being made for somebody with that particular background, with those particular research points, and with those particular corporate executions, what does that say about and for Zillica? I think it says, again, if things are not obvious, it obviously is for me, it says that uh, Zillica is still very tech heavy. 
and you can't, uh, you know, if you think that or people think that you can, you can take take out of Zelika, that's not happening. You know, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, we are a, plat, you know, a, a team that builds a platform and that platform is very tech heavy, right? And that's why I feel that uh, that's kind of the link that I would see, right? You know, we, we wanted to have someone who has an understanding of, you know, how blockchain platforms, you know, complex systems uh, work. So that's, that's one aspect of it. And the other aspect is you want someone to be able to understand what's happening in the broader, you know, DeFi and crypto space. You don't want people who, let's say, again, not to, not to badmouth anyone, but you don't want someone who comes in and comes with a very corporate angle, but he's struggling to get the idea of DeFi, right? He's struggling to get the, still trying to digest how, wh why does it make sense to put a hundred dollar collateral to get a $50 loan? You, know, you see, there, there are a lot of complexities that you need to be able to understand that to be able to drive the company forward, to be able to drive a certain direction forward. I think this is where it really been, been adds value, which is one, he understands the underlying tech and he, yeah, he's quite in, in tune with what's happening in the, in the broader DeFi and crypto space, which is what we need to be able to build our own direction. The, the real question will be, which uh, which football team does he support? And is that at odds with the rest of you, especially those of you based in London? Is that at odds with the rest of you? That's going to be one of the bigger questions. Coming I haven't out. asked him which, which team does he support yet. That That's going to be either a very fun or a very heated conversation, isn't it? Um, I, so, Amrit, what I'd like to do is uh, uh, respect everybody's time and because we've covered so much. We've followed back up with Valkyrie. We've talked about Lunar Crush. We've talked about Ben coming on board. I just want to leave this time open for you if there's anything on your mind because we have so much coming on. If there's anything we didn't talk about uh, about the previous three topics or if there's just anything out there, uh, your show, let's go ahead and, and leave the last word to you. Yeah, so one thing, you know, Pillar, uh, when Pillar launched, there were obviously some people who were asking that, look, uh, Pillar, we don't have enough liquidity in the market. So I... Uh, well, I, I, it was not my money, by the way, but some people think that, okay, Amrit was, uh, you know, put I was going to ask for a loan after we finished recording after I saw this, but you know, sorry, continue. <laughs> so it was not my, my personal money, by the way, just to be clear. And I, I tried to clarify this in one of the telegram channels. I don't know, I recall which one. Uh, but anyway, my, my, basically the reason why I did this, because I wanted to tell people that, look, uh, volt number 114 is ready, which, uh, which is basically meeting uh, enough pillar to, to get things started. And then I put that into um, into Zill swap, so you could have enough initial liquidity. Because it and was an, an yeah. additional half million that was put in, correct? Yeah, of course. I had to, I had to, you know, this is this is your money because you know it's Zillica's money in some ways. I had to make sure that in case something goes south, you know, my vault doesn't get liquidated. So I, I so put we in all know to go ask Zillica for money, not Amber directly. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> if you are if you are planning to liquidate my my vault, or you know, you are basically liquidating Zillica's vault. So. Uh, I plead there you are some people that. who want to. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, what I did afterwards is I put up a proposal. The good thing that I did was, and the good thing that some people did was, uh, after I put up a proposal, um, someone, again, it's debatable, you know, how good or bad that proposal is. And again, I'm happy to take those inputs in. But just as a community member, not as someone who, who represents Zelika, as a community member, I felt that maybe something could be done there. So I put up a proposal, and I think that proposal is on vote. Uh, and someone, I think John and some other um, uh, person on Twitter uh, put that on, on you know, vote.zilica.com so you could go and check out. Again, there are certain conditions on uh, that I put in. Again, if you don't like it, happy to propose a new one and we are happy to sort of take that into consideration. And then ho you know, hopefully that can easily be implemented uh, on the pillar side as well. So uh, go and check out some of these proposals that are out there, vote for it, and then you know, get, your voice, uh, get your voice heard. Well, thank you very much, Amrit. After this one, everybody needs a nap because there's so much going on. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thank you very much.